नमस्कार आई एम ज्योति किरण वेलकम टू द सेकेंड एपिसोड ऑफ डी डी भारतीज वेरी स्पेशल प्रोग्राम हिस्ट्री हंटर इन द प्रीवियस एपिसोड वी टॉक्ट अबाउट ओल्ड ब्रिटिश रेलिक्स द कॉरोनेशन प्लेट्स द मैप ऑफ डेली वेन ब्रिटिशर्स मेड डेली द कैपिटल एंड मैनी मोर सच थिंग्स रिलेटेड टू द ब्रिटिश मेमोरेबलिया वी ऑल्सो सॉ अ वास्ट कलेक्शन ऑफ विंटेज वॉचेज एंड क्लॉक्स टेन बॉक्सेज मैच बॉक्सेज रेडियोज telephones and typewriters so you guys must be guessing what's in store for you in today's show so let's welcome our guest delhi's renowned vintage memorabilia collector mr aditya vich aditya ji welcome to the show what you have to offer from your vast vintage collection to our viewers we should start with looking at something today which has a nostalgic value for all the indians today uh it's something which i feel bad about actually collecting because what we are talking about are vintage war medals now these war medals have been awarded and have been received by our brave soldiers but i guess over time a lot of people haven't managed to keep them together and luckily i have managed to lay my hands on a few war medals so i have a small war medal collection and i would like you to have a look at a few of them especially a few which go back to the second world war where a lot of medals were awarded to the indian soldiers and we have a few very beautiful ones if i show you a few ones here this is a medal which has been given by the king george 6 and if we see the medal closely it has the undivided india here we have pakistan as a part of india we have bangladesh as a part of india we have nepal as a part of india extended down to burma so this is a collectors item which shows how india looked under the british era uh, let me show you another war medal from the second world war now this is a war medal again awarded to the indian soldiers who performed exceptionally well in the second world war and if you see this medal it is uh, a medal which is from 1939 to 1945 and it has the name of the soldiers and their units engraved onto the sides which makes it a real collectible item uh, as i said it's something which should have remained a pride for the person who performed but somehow or the other i don't know if they've been stolen and have come through or the people had to give them up so there's a collection of a lot of beautiful war medals uh, which we see here not only that we have the post war uh medals which have been awarded to the indian soldiers in the different wars which have come in now this one is a 1965 war medal where we see a very beautiful one which has been awarded to, to the nagaland unit of the army and it has a beautifully carved elephant uh, uh which is the unit uh, factor which has been displayed here similarly a lot of other ones this has been awarded to the jammu and kashmir unit for protecting the hills again going back to the 1965 war and has a few beautiful structures for safeguarding the uh, forts safeguarding the historical monuments in delhi so uh, this goes on uh, the collection for the war medals is something which is there the latest ones i have is even from the kargil war one of the medals which comes in from the kargil war which is here the operation parakram medal so uh, it's been a situation where i'm trying to put together i'm still looking out for a first world war medal and i hope i can find one just to complete my 100 years of war medal collections as a napoleon bonaparte saying goes he once said give me enough medals and i'll win any war for you so now let's move on to our next section books are called as men's best friend and we got to know that you have books as old as uh, uh, related to the era of 18th century so tell us something about your books the oldest ones you have and how many of them you are having in your collection it's a pleasure to have books to be actually going and seeing them how they have evolved right from 
the last 400 years and luckily I don't have books which date back to 300, 400 years but I have managed to put together books which are about 130, 135 years old to start with. My oldest book goes back to about 1884 and from there on over the next 30 to 40 years I managed to put on some iconic books together and it gives me a great pleasure to see works of a lot of very recognized authors and books which have which date back to more than a hundred years actually being preserved in pristine uh, conditions. I have books which have iconic writers from Kipling's to Charles Dickens to uh, the Wuthering Heights to Rabindranath Tagore's uh, Gardner to some Oxford dictionaries which are almost about 90 years old uh, translations of uh, dictionaries from English to Urdu and vice versa. Uh, Edgy Wells, The History of Mankind, Pearl as Bach, The Glasgow's. So the list is endless. The books which are there are not only great in terms of their content, but the quality in which they have been produced, the pictures that they have uh, had, the hand drafted, the handcrafted, the hand painted pictures in them bring together a feeling which is uncomparable. So I have books which start from that era, the books which start from the 1818s going to the 1930s and the 1940s and from there on my collection takes on to a lot of uh, comic books because I put together a lot of American comics books into the 1930s, 1940s, 1950s and 1960s. So it's been a collection where I feel that I have a collection of say about somewhere close to about five to six thousand books. What we see here is a 1929 Auckland Weekly. Now this magazine, a weekly magazine, used to be available across the British Empire, the Australia, the New Zealand and England. And if we see it has some fantastic quality of picture and printed as old as 1929 and it has been a very very well kept piece that's what makes it a very interesting collectible piece Aditya ji would you like to show some iconic book from your collection to our viewers sure there are a few very nice ones which i would like the viewers to have a look at and specifically because these books actually take us back to the uh, indianism that we tend to follow now what i have here is a uh, original 1911 Vishnu Puran. Now as we know Vishnu we consider as the preserver and this book actually in Sanskrit called the Maha Puranam actually gives out everything which is well preserved the complete story of Vishnu in Sanskrit shalokas. Now this book has survived now almost about 105 years and the good part is that it has been a well preserved, each page of it has been kept very well. So this gives me a great sense of actually preserving a piece of Indian history as well as an Indian religion factor. Actually the list goes on uh, further. You have the Woodring Heights which is here, which is again I think the most iconic uh, movie which we guys have lived through to the cinema. So this is the original Woodring Heights which is uh, there and the art of the book by Emily Bronte which has been here makes it feel very different from the movie. So actually having the book makes it feel a lot better. Similarly I have the Robinson Crusoe the first edition, I have the Charles Dickens. It makes you preserve the books, you want them to keep going on for probably another few hundred years maybe down the line like we try to locate books which are 300, 400 years old. I would love to see them survive for that period of time. Collecting things is a hobby and most of the times hobby is related to habit. Aditya ji we have heard you have a smoker's corner. Do you smoke? No. I actually don't smoke and as a matter of fact that makes the collection a lot more interesting. Why? Because it's easier when you are actually using something but I realize that the facts and the damage smoking does, it does no good. So I never smoked in my life. But uh, the smoking industry actually has been a very aristocratic industry. If you go back to the history and you see 
smoking has been something which has been revered with with the uh, aristocratic class or the royals so that's what actually got me to put together the smokers corner i've been working on the smokers corner and i've been actually putting it together into five different categories and as i went and dwelled into it i found that it had a very interesting history and a lot of different variations into it i collect vintage cigarette boxes i collect vintage lighters i put together matchbox covers i put together match boxes as a matter of fact i have one of the biggest matchbox collections which dates back to a uh, very historic <coughs> match boxes and i also put try and put together some advertisements for the cigarettes which used to appear no longer do we get that situation now because they've been banned by law as we know the harmful effects of smoking so their advertisings had a lot of collectors value so these are the five categories which i put together and i make my smokers corner <clears throat> i don't do that very proudly because as i said smoking is not a great habit but the collectibles are a great piece of collection i have i'll start with the tin boxes and my tin box collection for the cigarettes goes back to the 1940s and the 1950s i have some iconic cigarette case boxes which have been actually made in england and brought into india because the players navy cut now this cigarette actually is a, a british cigarette and cigarettes used to come in in a pack of 50 cigarettes into tin boxes like these so this is a 1930s uh, uh, cigarette uh, navy cut box apart from this i have another box which is the graven a now this is again a british cigarette again a 50s pack which used to be brought in into tin boxes from england and sold here uh they actually also used to come in as a gift box situations this is the bvd the british cigarettes made in england and they used to have 50 cigarettes and were given in as a aristocratic gift at that point of time so these are the bvd cigarette cases we have the d uh, resic uh, cigarette cases which are here made in precardly specifically for a very elite class of the people they were uh, virgin cigarettes as we used to call them and these are the honeydew cigarette case boxes the honeydews were a lot of very famous cigarettes in india the uh, 500 cigarettes used to be packed into this in packaging of tens each and brought in and sold here along with the boxes as a wholesale box cigarettes as i said was an aristocratic habit it wasn't something like anybody was carrying it so they used to make cigarette boxes specifically to keep the cigarettes safe this is a cigarette box in which somebody could carry four cigarettes for themselves and carry it in their pocket so that the cigarettes don't break or get damaged so these are the kind of interesting elements which makes you collect and put these things together apart from the cigarettes what came along simultaneously was the lights the lights or the matchbox <laughs> we guys probably don't think too much about a matchbox today but way back in 1920s or 1930s matchbox used to be a very prized possession we did not have the technology to make matchboxes we used to import them from sweden and a lot of kings in the country and a lot of maharajas used to actually send the pictures to sweden to get their matchboxes made mahamantri which royal painting of mine do you think i should send to sweden for my much loved match boxes i want them to look the finest oh mighty king my submission is to go with the one that our shahi chitrakar painted in the royal garden the one in which the shine of your sword can shame the sun very well said mahamantri send the portrait to sweden today positively sure now so the match boxes had to be protected now what is your i am showing you here are what we call in as the match box protectors these were metal plates which they used to put and they used to actually put the match box inside these metal cases to preserve the match box from deshaping or getting wet so this is what you had coming in as the match box preservers or the match box cases 
So you have a plenty of them. I have a few of them. This is and they also used to act as a promotional tool for the companies and the uh, manufacturers for the matchbox cases. So I have a lot of uh, cigarette cases which are there, which used to be uh, the preserving element for the cigarette cases. The lighters, they've always caught our imaginations. So we had the lighters which were put together. I have a collection of lighters and almost every company put together their lighters. Why did they put together their lighters? Was because it was actually a sense of advertisement. Otherwise, it was a sense of possession for everybody which had. We have the Jack Daniels uh, lighter here. We have a Ford lighter here. We have a Ford lighter here. We have a Rothmans. We have a Jim Bean. Plus, I have managed to put together a lot of lighters from the airlines because till about 1980s, you could smoke in the airlines. So all the airlines used to have their lighters. And most of these lighters have a history attached to them. They, are, they talk about the company. They talk about the way things were. And the way they used to be lighted up were very interesting. Every lighter actually lit up very differently. For the example, this one, if you see, it's a card, a playing card game. If I show you this one, it is like a bomb. It opens like a bomb and lights up like a bomb. The one which I have here is a very interesting because it's a lighter come cigarette lighter come a cigar lighter. If I open this side and burn it, it helps me burn the cigar. This used to come in as a set. This used to be the tobacco stuffing uh, tube for the situation or to attach a cigarette along and burn it up. And on this side, this would be a cigarette lighter. So we see that a lot of different techniques, a lot of different works were done on the cigarette lighting situations because it represented something which was more than the ordinary. So this is what puts makes me put together my smoker's corner. Then came in the cigarette holding boxes. Now the cigarette smoking holding boxes used to be boxes like this where they could put in their cigarettes, put it together and carry it in their pockets because it would be something to show off. So a lot of very interesting cigarette boxes came up along the way. We still get them. As a matter of fact, this is a new one, but I just put it together. And of course, it comes with a huge warning on smoking now. But I put it together because this is the evolutionary phase of how cigarettes have been sold over the last hundred odd years. So that is where the story of the smoker's corner comes from. I can show you a couple of very old, as I said, Maharajas used to send in their pictures to get the matchboxes printed. So I have a very interesting matchbox which dates back here. So this is a matchbox cover where the Maharaja sent his picture to Sweden to get the matchbox printed. And a lot of companies worked on the matchboxes at that era. And let me show you a Swedish made matchbox as how it used to come in during that time. So this is a 1920s made in Sweden matchbox cover. So all these things put together actually make what I call in as my smoker's corner. I find the category very interesting though it may not be a very healthy habit. So it was an interesting collection Aditya ji. After the vintage smoker's corner let's move on to our next section and I believe it is the vintage two-wheelers. Sure. What an interesting collection of vintage two-wheelers. Aditya ji, how many of them you have in your collection? I have about eight two-wheelers which are there. I've been actually trying to restore them and put them together. And uh, the reason why I actually started putting up the two-wheelers was that my father used to drive me around on a Vespa when I was a small kid. So my first interest came up that I should have a Vespa and as a matter of fact, this Vespa that you see here is the same Vespa which I used to ride uh, when my father used to take me around as a kid. So this is a 1963 Vespa, the original Italian Vespa. And I managed to get it restored. And specifically, I got it restored from a gentleman in uh, Karnataka because he used to import parts for uh, Vespa. And eventually, I put together another Vespa which you can see here. Now, this is a very nice Vespa. This is a 1967 Vespa. And the good part of it is that this Vespa actually 
uh, had a few changes which came up after the 1963 uh, Vespas and it's still a pleasure to drive it around. I drive it around very often and it still gives me that feel factor of my childhood when I used to ride a Vespa. Eventually, the Vespas lost out on the market and the Lambretas took over, another Italian brand which took over. So I and the Lambretas were called in as the workhorses. I have uh, two Lambretas which are there and eventually by the 1980s when Bajaj took over the scooter market, Lambretas actually moved out. The Italians moved out. The Vespas shut shop and the Lambretas stopped being manufactured and were taken over by the Indian companies. We have then the eventual Lambi Polo coming in, which is this one which you see. This is a Lambi Polo. It was taken over by the API, the Scooters India Limited uh, eventually in the 1980s. And then they came up with their own version of the Vijay Super, which was again actually uh, at heart a Lambretta, but it was called and marketed as a Vijay Super. So that's the scooter story which I have actually managed to put together. I have about seven of uh, the vintage scooters which are there. They're not really vintage, but they're classics because 1960s onwards to 1980s. They're more classic than vintage, but they give you a very, very interesting feel factor of how scooters evolved in India. They have been actually the uh, thing that Indians have always ridden in the last 40 years before actually in the uh, 1990s the bikes took over. So till then the scooters have been what uh, of the major weightage and value. So I have them and I managed to restore all of them into their original conditions. So that's my uh, two-wheeler collection which includes Vespas from 1960s, the Lambretas from 1970s, the Vijay Super from late 1970s and early 1980s. So how difficult it is to maintain them? Do you get the spare parts now, the old ones like the scooters of the era of 60s and 50s and how often you take them for right? It is difficult to maintain because you don't get the spare parts any longer. The spare parts have disappeared and you need to find ways or you need to add a lot of times <coughs> also import the spares and most of the current mechanics available in the market don't understand about them because for them they can't even figure out where or which direction is the carburetor in or which direction is the spark plug in and how do this uh, they used to run so a lot of times i have to actually explain to them i have to actually tell them where it is and luckily there are still few people, uh, mechanics who are in their late 70s or early 80s who are still around to guide and tell what is to be done. As a matter of fact, I got one of my Lambretas restored from a gentleman who is almost close to 80 now. So it's difficult but it has its own charm. It still manages to run and it still manages to give me the pleasure. I ride them, ride them around off and on. I take them for a small ride. Uh, at times and it still makes you feel nostalgic about how these things operated. It is interesting to know that you ride almost all of them quite often. Now if we talk about uh, bikes, vintage bikes, how many of uh, vintage bikes you have in your collection apart from scooters? Uh, bikes, I have always wanted to have a few bikes but unluckily I don't have a lot of them but just to ensure that I keep my interest going I have got a bike modified to look like a British Army 1942 bike and what got me to do that was that I actually laid my hands on two original seats of a vintage bike uh, which belonged to the British Army so I actually bought a bullet and I got it modified to look like a British Army 1942 bike eventually I'm sure I'm going to have a few more vintage bikes put together as well so keep watching History Hunter as in the next episode we'll be showcasing an awesome huge collection of vintage cars. Thank you so much. Goodbye.